The story so far, I am porting Fusix to the ESP8266 and currently I am fighting the SD card driver. I have everything working with the internal flash but it's just too slow so I want to use a external SD card for storage. And this is turning out to be harder than everything else put together. So after several sessions of not getting anywhere with it, I decided to uh, instead do some work on the TTY, but plans changed when I had a bit of a breakthrough, or rather a realization of the really obvious thing I should have tried very early on, which is to write some Arduino code to talk to the SD card and see what it did. The answer is, works fine. So this is the signal analyzer trace of the Arduino code writing to, well, accessing the card. So that you can see here is the init sequence, here is the command going out, here is it receiving the reply, and here is the reply back from the card. So everything is fine except that PulseView doesn't seem to want to decode that very well. Um, I'm a little suspicious of PulseFuse decoder, to be honest, at this point. So we know that the card is working, the SD card reader is working, the, uh, the SPI interface on the microcontroller is working, and this means that whatever's wrong is just my code, which makes life so much simpler. Plus, we have a trace here to compare against for my code versus uh, the Arduino code. So let's reflash it with my code and see what happens. I think I can actually already guess what might be the problem. But let's just set up a new session. I wish I could duplicate this one. Um, but I'm not sure I can. I might be able to save it. And then load it in again. Yeah, that seems to work unless it's going to try and be, do something clever because they both have the same file name. Uh, let's save this again as session two, just to make sure they are different. Okay, so let's reflash. Oh yeah, and I forgot to wipe the file system on the NAND flash, but that's okay, I don't care about that for now. So it's flashing, hit the, well, hang on, where's, the run button. What, we can only run the first session? Fantastic. Okay, well, let's hit the run button, hit the reset button. Uh, I think I was... It's great, it's hung. Fantastic. Okay, let's try that again. Good job I saved the session. So, 12 megahertz, 200 million. And here it is. So this is produced by my code. So if I create a new session and open the old one, Okay, so this is the Arduino code, this is the Fusix code. And wait a minute. 
that's a response. Uh, let me try that again. Well, of course, th this will be happening because the Arduino code powered on the SD card and initialized it. So now, now it's, this is, this is garbage. This is the command going out. This is the clock chopping madly. Okay, uh, that's weird. That was the weird behavior I was seeing before. Interesting. Well, anyway, let's compare with what we are getting out of uh, the Arduino code. So firstly, the clock timing is 250 kilohertz, which is similar to the 320 that we're using here. Uh, we, it, this is sending 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 bytes of sync pulses versus our 20. That's fine. Uh, comparing the the actual command byte, we see the well. Apart from the nasty clock noise, we are seeing the signal going. Ha! Huh, yeah, the mozzie signal is changing on a clock uh, trailing edge and being sampled on the clock leading edge, which is just what we're seeing here. Uh, let's find that. So I believe that apart from the nasty clock noise, this is all fine. However, the big difference is there's a long period with uh, CS high and mozzie low before it does the initialization, which may be important. Um, now, I thought that the init code would do that. So this is raising CS and then sending out the 20 bytes of data. Hmm. However, I am a little worried about the clock noise and I'm wondering if I'm failing to configure the clock properly. And the issue we're seeing here is because the Arduino code has set up the clock in a particular fashion. But the clock here is okay. And we're using the same code to write these pulses as we are to write the command. Yeah, except for the clock select line, or the chip select line. This is kind of weird. Do we need a pull up resistor? Well, I can go find the Arduino code. I have looked at this before and their uh, SBI code is annoyingly complex. Uh, this is... Uh, this is their code which does a complete transaction.
I think there is nothing particularly interesting here. So I actually want the SPI interface. Okay, let's where is this called from? This I remember is being called from here. So oh wait a minute. SPI zero command sends it to SPI zero. Okay, this is the one we want. So let's find out where this is called from. Oh, no, I was wrong. I was wrong. Confusingly wrong. Yes, I'm a little bit puzzled. I'm sure I remember seeing SPI stuff in here. SPI slave, SPI... Was it in here? I don't think so. Okay, um, honestly, I, I remember seeing the code before, I just can't remember where it is. And it was one of these, wasn't it? Okay, well... Um, I've got the actual Arduino code in here, I believe. Yes. So let's use some more sensible uh, traces. That's too much noise. This routine looks like it's um, talking to the NAND flash, which is not what we want. We've got SPI utils we've already looked at. Phi? This is, this is all NAND flash stuff. See, I'm sure I found this before.
So here is the SD card file system. So what's this calling? Uh, underscore FS No. Um. Oh, ESP SD fat is empty. <laughs> SD. Is nothing in there? SDFS. This is the thing we saw before. This is looking at underscore FS, which is. SD fat Gah. Is in here. Okay, I am deeply confused. I did remember seeing this before. Uh, let's search for one of these. SPI1C, that should... Ah, right, right. I thought this was... Um, generic SPI, but it's not. It's platform specific. I would still like to find the the actual SD card stuff. Uh, SPI USSE. Well, anyway, let's get back to this. The clock initialization I am uncertain about, but this we can do something about fairly straightforwardly. Uh, in the init code, before we send out the bytes, we want a short delay. And we can do that with set timer sec. Um, I believe, well, we can figure out exactly how much the delay is. And this end is here. That's 200 microseconds. So we probably don't want to use a timer for this, but instead a busy loop. Um,
So set timer duration, I think is in milliseconds. Will a one millisecond delay work? Sixteen bit mini ticks. The actual SD card stuff here has a slightly, here we go, set timer milliseconds. Yeah, let's, so set timer milliseconds, one millisecond. Wait for the timer to expire simple. Uh, because we have the timer interrupt, this should work rather than just hang. If it does just hang, then that means our timer interrupt doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to guess a timer interrupt doesn't work. Ugh. Okay. Wonder if interrupts are on at this point. Well, let's just do a busy loop. Um, So the volatile int is to prevent the compiler from optimizing that away. Great, and there goes the signal analyzer again. Wasn't crashing so much last time. I think I forgot to save here. Okay. So let's set this to 12 megahertz, 200 meg samples, hit run. And it didn't work. Let's try that again. Okay, what have we got? Okay, here is our delay. Here is our init sequence. Here is our mangled clock, so I think I'm going to have to do something about that. All right, so let's take a look at this SBI code and see what it does. It's possible we're setting the clock up incorrectly. So here we are configuring our pins. The S clock pin gets set to the HSPI function, MISO, HSPI, uh, MOSI, HSPI. Um, I don't know what that USSE is. This appears to be configuring everything to, 
well, the control register becomes zero. Uh, this is, in our code, this is configured down here. SPI slave edge. That I think this would be the wrong setting. Maybe this is configured elsewhere. Uh, U1 is configuring the size of the bytes of the words which we are doing here. It's setting duplex mode because we want this kind of sending. Okay, this is setting the chip select stuff. It wants to know whether to use the uh, the HSBI's chip select handling or to use a GPIO. I'm not sure why this is configuring it as an input, but never mind. So set the SPI mode, we want mode 0, CPOL 0, CPHA 0. We don't want this set. We don't want this set. Yeah, all zeros is fine for SPI mode 0. Set the bit order. We want most significant bit first, so unset both of these. Yes. Clock configuration. Which is the complex computation. And then eventually it calls set clock divider, which is this. Which is what we are doing here. GP mux is unset. Whatever this does. Okay, set the data bit. We want eight bits, so uh, yes, yeah, so this is seven shifted left and seven shifted left. Um, I think for this we want this, but I don't think that makes a difference. Right, when we do a transfer, we set eight bits of data. Configure SPIU, yeah, yeah, set the data into SPIW zero. Set busy, wait until not busy. and return the value. So this is both a send and a receive. We could combine this easily enough. So 
So transmit byte is send receive B and ignore the result. Receive byte is send receive of an FF. We'll make our code a bit smaller. So my guess is something's wrong with the clock configuration. Because this clock is as hopelessly garbled. So let's try power cycling the board and try that again. Okay, board power cycled, run, reset, stop. And our clock is back the way it was. Interesting. However, we are still not getting any response from the board. Okay, so let's open our saved session what is different about these two traces well here we have our initialization and the command packet here we have our initialization and the command packet. So this is actually responding, this is decoding the command and the response byte. This is doing the command, but not the response byte. So what could be different? Do we need to toggle CS here? Possibly, because we're not doing that here. OK, the beginning of our command packet in the working code, we drop CS, pause, immediately start sending data. These look the same. These look the same. So there are only really two possible differences here. One is the clock speed, because we are using a faster clock than the Arduino is. The Arduino is using 250 kilohertz for this. And the other is this toggling of chip select. Well, this is the easier one to fix, so let's do that. SDI SBC lower CS SDI SBI raise CS okay possibly that wants to be a bit longer but we have actually toggled CS and nothing's happening. Is 
there a... I don't think there's a busy loop routine that we can use for short delays. No, I don't think there is. Okay, so volatile int i equals zero. So this has, the Arduino has fewer reset pulses than we do. They are the same shape as ours. So maybe it's the clock speed? I am somewhat suspicious about this, the clock speed initialization. Now this uses this uh, extremely complex clock initialization code, which um, iterates onto uh, iterates computing values until you come up with the closest possible clock speed to the one you asked for. Which would be somewhat of a pain to actually copy. What's this last set register thing? Don't configure the clock uh, under certain circumstances. Well, we can use this computes the actual clock frequency from the value being set in the clock register. However, there are actually multiple fields and that routine only seems to use two of them. And we stole this code from the uh, the SDK. So just thought it would be right. So set clock divider is actually doing the work. Uh, it's been set to reg value. Which is being initialized nowhere. Uh, oh, oh, it's... It, this is a union of an int32 and a bit field. So what it's doing is dividing up the bits in the bit field. Sorry, the bits in the register by fields here.
That might be worth stealing. Yeah, I think the sensible thing to do here is to steal the steal this union and then the clock generation code. So that will be need this. We'll have to convert this into C and chop it down somewhat. Okay, so this wants to go here. SPI clock T becomes SPI clock T. This is a normal function. So this is going to be peripheral clock, which is defined in globals. So if the requested speed is faster than the peripheral clock, set the peripheral clock speed. I don't care about the last set stuff. Set the Uh, yeah, okay. This calculates the new clock speed. Change that into a Actually, we want to do that throughout. Static cast. And but we also need to change the these as well. Debug tracing in. Turn this off. And we want to set frequency. Go fast wants to be eight megahertz, otherwise two fifty kilohertz.
undefined reference to abs. Okay, what's this going to do? It worked! Look! It found partition table. So apparently the clock frequency is much more sensitive than I thought. Here we go. Command byte, response. And it has found uh, this is actually the SD card I use for the MSP430, so I think I will not overwrite this. But that has successfully probed the partition table, done all... Yeah, it works. Awesome. Okay, I'm... Do I want to keep this code or attempt to clean it up? It is it is a blatant ripoff of the Arduino code, which I kind of like to avoid. There's nothing wrong with the Arduino code, but uh, I would like to be able to understand it more what does the tracing say well these are wrong Um, and in fact, the tracing is mostly garbage. Real frequency zero, 250 kilohertz. So, The only thing I can think of is that we failed to set the clock correctly. Here are the fields in the clock, which are all ones. So the pre-div was name is two. Well, assuming these are left to right, which I don't necessarily know. So what seems to be happening here is it started with a guess, which is presumably here. Now it starts with the minimum and then it's it resets to value of zero it fills the various fields with something and then it iterates it does a binary search
looking for an appropriate value. Okay, so if you switch back to my original code with no other changes, what happens? It doesn't work. What is the value we are writing to the clock register? this. Let's go back to the Arduino code. And the value being written is this. Uh, SBI clock Looking for the register documentation such as it is. SBI clock. <laughs> Be nice to have documentation as to what these actually mean, but this is the only reference in the whole thing. So, SPI frequency is. Oh, well, that's actually pretty straightforward in terms of computation. Uh, so why is the Arduino going through all this complexity? Well, there seem to be only two values we care about which is the pre-computation value and n. H and L are derived from the others. So if we simply do, uh, let's copy this so we actually want to calculate uh, pre and n. So That would be pre plus one times. Um, I assume that the parentheses are like this. That is, there are two divisions. So that would end up being n plus one times pre equals 80 megahertz divided by pre plus one. Um, 
n plus 1 times pre plus 1 times freak equals 80 megahertz. We know that this is 250 kilohertz. So the top uh, So the pre-computation value, we want 16, 17, 18. So it's this shifted right by 2 is 4. Um, N is um, shifted right by twelve. N is only six bits, so that's a one. So therefore, our actually, I need to do so. Therefore, going by the first formula, so that's eighty megahertz. Divided by five divided by two, which is eight million. That is not two fifty kilohertz. Oh, uh, this has actually broken out the values for us here which is nice. But that still gives us pre equals 4, n equals 1. So uh, this routine... Yes, clock divided by... Ah, no, I've been doing that... Uh, I've been doing this incorrectly. Uh, the parentheses it's like that. No, it's not. No, it's not. I think I was right the first time. So 80 divided by the pre-computation value gives this. Divide that by the n value gives this. But that is nothing like the 250 kilohertz that we should be getting. Our peripheral clock is set to 80 megahertz. We know this to be true, otherwise this computation would not work. Also, why is the real frequency calculated by this? Wait a minute. Where is ESP8266 clock set? Here. Well, this should be peripheral clock times 
1 million. Let me just check to make sure that still works. Uh, maths is not my strong point. I have a lot of trouble keeping numbers straight in my head. Um, I suspect it may be... Okay, that's not working. It may be a very small touch of dyslexia. I'm okay with words. I'm good with words. I write. But maths, not so good. Oh, actual maths I'm fine with. I'm more thinking of arithmetic. Okay, so this is the value being written. So pre-computation for n is 1, real frequency is 0. I really don't understand what's going on here. Yeah, I think I am just going to keep this code given that it works, but let's uh, simplify slightly. and reformat it according to the way I like. Um, I'll also simplify these by, because we're always checking for busy before and after each operation, we don't need uh, those weight routines. Is there any real abs we can use? Studlib.h. I can't remember if Studlib is part of the, uh, the, comp the compiler library. This should be all right. This normally means, yep, missing brace there. Rather, an extra base there. Uh, there may be an abs in the ROM.
So wait for that to That is on abs. What's that what this is doing is A2 is the input. It negates it. If the result is greater than zero uh If A2 is greater than zero, copy. Sorry, if A2 is greater than zero, copy A2 into A4, copy A4 into A2. It's not how I would have written it, but it's there. In fact, there's an abs instruction. Interesting. But we can use this. will save a handful of bytes. Um, Dev SDSBI. Okay, so uh, we now have a working SD card library, so let's quickly check that in. And then let's put the file system on it. Although it suddenly occurs to me that it doesn't seem to be scanning the flash, so did I disable that? Yes, I did. Uh, we want the flash to be HDA for reasons. And here we go. Scanning flash, 1489K. Um, HDA, we can prove the just improve the tracing a little. So, uh it hasn't found any flash partitions. It has found three SD card partitions on HP1, HP2, and HP3. It's failed to mount the flash, so it panics. Okay. Now let's undo some of our debug code. Uh, this we will need. This we will not need. This should just be raised. Let's just get rid of all of that. Does it still work? Okay, let's power cycle the board. And reset it. it. Still works. Good. Um, C 
So here is the SD card stuff. Here is the uh, boot code, which we've fiddled with without really knowing what we're doing. Device in it with the SD card stuff in it. Dev SPI that badly needs a cleanup. Uh, oh yes, and we don't want to try and run sh instead of init, but that's the lot. So revert start dot c just to rebuild, make sure it works. Good. Good. All right, so now we want to put together a file system which is easily done. Um, as I said, I don't want to write onto the uh, the same card that I'm using for the MSP430 because I almost will keep that for the time being. So I'm going to go find another card and get this set up. Be back in a moment. Okay, so I have dug up a card. It's an old one gigabyte one that I seem to have been using for a uh, Android firmware upgrade. So let's partition it. Um, so here's the old partition table. Delete. I want to create a primary partition for the swap, which can be one meg. I mean, we have loads of space now. Create another partition. I don't actually know how big Fuzix partitions can be. B. Uh, let's just make the rest and see what happens. So there we have our two partitions. Right. And we're going to use our the same command we were using, the same script we were using before to set up the root file system, but we're going to adjust it. So we don't want to do the loopback stuff. Uh, we want this is the uh, the partition that we're going to put the actual file system on. Uh, we don't want to do this anymore because we don't care about trimming on the SD card. It will take care of itself. We don't want to do that and we don't want to do that. Okay, so... Um, SDG is correct. Okay, so it did the thing. So now the only thing to do is to put the card in the board. Which is done. Fire up the serial terminal. Press the reset button. Reset button. Interesting. Uh, in fact, that's not the only thing we need to do because we need to change the the boot partition. Uh, this is we need want HDB in both cases, so we're going to have to reflash. Interesting. Let me power cycle that board again. Let 
Okay. Flash. It's not flashing. I haven't done anything to it other than to replace the card. What if I pull the card out? Okay, reflash. It flashes. And of course the card's not in it. So let's put the card back in. Hit the reset button. It doesn't like the card. Interesting. It's a SanDisk micro SD card in an adapter. There's nothing particularly exotic there. Let's try the other card, the one I was using before. And reset. OK, that's bizarre. Let's swap the micro SD cards. I mean, they're both SanDisk devices. So now I'm putting the new micro SD card into the old adapter. Plug it in. Reset. It doesn't like the card. But it works fine in the PC. And this is the the old card in the new adapter. Yep. Interesting. Oh well, I suppose I better go and get another one. Here's a five twelve make card. I have a lot of cards. And it's on SDG as before. Uh, that looks like... I think I may have already flashed this. Okay, so let's... It's partitioned. This card may not work, so, but let's actually just try it. Okay. And unplug from the PC. Plug into the board. Serial terminal. Huh. This is very strange. Okay, card number three, or four even. Okay, here is a one gigabyte SanDisk card, a different one. I haven't flashed it. I'm just going to stick it in the board and hit the reset button. No! Why isn't this working? Let's just try the one we know works first. Uh, I think I may have got them swapped around. Yeah. Why is this one consistently working and all the others consistently not? Well, Here's a slightly dodgy MMC card. No. And put back the original card. Odd. Very, very odd. Thing is, this can't be anything to do with my code because uh, it's 
booting perfectly well uh the kernel is being loaded out of flash so none of my code is ever running um unless there is something else going on Let's try Let's try a random card And hit the button Okay, that's not working, so let's put a message in here um like so I cannot ETS put C e yeah I keep t typing ETC instead of this okay so this should print the word boot and start up Okay, I just unplugged the card and it suddenly starts up. This is nothing to do with me. Absolutely nothing. Well, you can't see the word boot appear because it hasn't... Uh, the serial... the UART hasn't settled. It seems to be that some cards work and some don't. So, well, I want to get on, so I think for the only thing to do, here is the working card. The only thing to do is to reuse this card. So, uh, there it is, an SDG. So we've got a 2 megabyte swap partition, a 32 megabyte file system partition, and everything else. So let's just do... Let's just copy the file system like that, like that, and just reuse the old card. The only one that I know works. All right, it's plugged in, it's flashed, hit the reset button, and it's mounted the file system. Good grief, this is slow. Is it actually working? Don't need this anymore, it didn't work anyway. Well, it's loaded in it and in it is running. So one thing we can do is to optimize our transmit and receive functions. But let's just put in
So we should be able to see it re read and write sectors. So it gets to here and it just stops dead. That's not so brilliant. But reading and writing is much faster than it was. This was it loading in it from the file system, doing some file system stuff, presumably forking. This is it swapping out in it. Okay. Something's not right. Luckily, we have the tools to debug this. Okay, we can see it's done the fork. That's got further started in it, does its stuff, it forks, here it swaps something out, swap out done, we swap, we load in, yeah, here's exec loading in the new stuff, set something up, swap out, fail. It's it's printed swapping out, but it hasn't printed swap out done, so it seems to have stopped about here. This sounds like something in our transmit receive code has wedged. And it's waiting for the card to respond, but it's not. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Here's our transfer sector function. So Here is it writing out a sector, so that you transmit the, the uh, we send the command to do the write, uh, including the LBA address. Then we transmit the data and wait for the result. Now, is it successfully transmitting a complete sector? Yes, it is. It's the next thing's not working. I'm just going to change this to send to receive address plus plus one, and this to send to receive OXFF, because that then will allow me to do. this uh, so that we can trace each individual byte going out but not the sector data. Okay, so we have Uh, 
we have, I believe, sent the command plus the 4-byte argument plus the dummy CRC at the end. Then we transmit the... We've got an OK from the card, so we transmit the uh, the 254 to indicate the data is arriving. Then our sector data. Then our dummy CC and a padding byte. And then we wait for a response. SDI SPI wait is supposed to time out, but it won't time out because our timer doesn't work. So I think that something's gone wrong with the card. It's not receiving a response, but uh, we aren't timing out and attempting to retry. All right then, so in devices, here is where we set up the timer. Here is our timer interrupt. I'm pretty sure this was working. No cues. Oh, we are getting cues. Periodically. So why have we suddenly stopped? And why is the timer not advancing? The timer stuff is dead simple. Uh, the timer itself is just the value where the timer expires. Um, which happens here. Let's just see, are we actually incrementing the timer, uh, the system clock? I do not see any eyes. So let's put that here and see if that makes a difference. Yes, we're getting eyes throughout. So this is not working right. Where is ticks per d second set up? Uh, that's supposed to be... Uh, so ticks this d second is a counter of the number of ticks per tenth of a second. So this will period, this will count up until we fill it fill up a d-second and then it will update the system timer. Let's 
start.c ticks per d second. So is ticks per sec should be 20. That doesn't look very bad. OK. This may crash horribly. Calling key printf from interrupt handler is a terribly bad idea. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, zero, one. and then swap out happens is swap out happening from inside a interrupt handler uh, from with it with interrupts turned off it might be So I think that happens in here. Calling do fork interrupts have been turned off. We call do fork. So this is timing out because well, it's hanging because something's gone wrong with the SD card. It's timing out inside a place where the timeout timer isn't operating. Okay, so let's try. Well, let's put that back the way it was and let's go to here and let's try s s slowing down the. SD card. See if that makes a difference. Nope, it still fails. So this is SPI weight that's failing. So we can Let's just see what the card returns. Well, that seemed to be fine. It did lots of stuff and eventually it crashed here. It's tried to store to instruction RAM with a byte.
that's not going to work. This makes me very suspicious as to why it ever worked before. Okay. Let's... Because remember, the instruction RAM can't do byte accesses. So we're going to have to rewrite these to use block transfers. So let's receive an entire sector. Now the where's our buffer? Here we go. There are sixty four bytes worth of buffer. which only does 32-bit accesses. We want to fill the buffer. Um, so this is eight chunks we want to do. So we've got this mem copy routine. It does uh, unaligned copies and it does copies where the source and the destination are aligned. I think that for this we're going to need to have copy routines for the cases where the source is aligned and the destination is unaligned and vice versa, which is annoying. Well, what I'm planning on doing is um, we're going to We are going to send a uh, 64 by 8. We're going to send 512 bytes at a time. Uh, we only want, hang on, this is receiving. So this wants to be MISO. So we're going to want to copy the destination is the buffer, the source is our data pointer, the size is 64 bytes. Wait, no, no, I'm thinking of this is a input, so all we want is this. We then copy into our destination from the buffer 64 bytes advance the buffer so this will do a much faster transfer 512 bits at a time from the card so let's just see what this does I believe it's failed to read from the card. So look up LBA D pointer. And 
I might need the signal analyzer again to see what's going on here. Interestingly, I don't see it call SPI receive sector. Okay, let's try it in the signal analyzer. Oh, stupid thing. Uh, this is the screen recorder I'm using. seems to have failed to identify my signal analyzer. Has it glitched out somehow? Apparently it has. Interesting. Okay, let's just try power cycling it and trying it again. Come on. Okay, well apparently it's died completely for some reason. Well... I don't know why this hasn't worked at all. So this is the initialization code. Here you can see it writing out our 20, well, reading our 20 bytes. Here's the init sequence. with various commands. Is it... I think it's actually retrying multiple times. It keeps sending that 6.5 command. Um, maybe it doesn't like this. Okay, well, thanks to the magic of undo, let's try taking out our receive code. To here, and see if that works any better. No. Power cycle the board. Intriguing. Okay, well, let's put all our stuff back again. And give that a try. Okay, so we should be able to see, yep, here it is reading 
uh, sectors from the disk and it looks like they're all word aligned which is nice I don't think we can guarantee that uh, but it does fail here so let's just copy our code So this is transmitting so we want to write to our output buffer from S pointer 64 bytes turn on the transmitter wait till it's completed advance uh, what doesn't that like doesn't like that being appointed to volatile okay Well, it's doing the same thing it did before. It's getting a decent amount of the way through and is then just stalling. So let's try putting this back. Right, we just continually read FFs. The card never wakes up. I am beginning to suspect there's some kind of issue with running an SD card off this device. that may be causing the card to glitch out somehow. The card is connected to the 3.3 volt line rather than the 5 volt line, which I believe to be correct. Oh, you're behaving now. No, you're not. Just, we can still try changing the uh, the frequency. No. Very slow. Seems to be consistently dying at about the same place each time. So the last thing we did was we tried to write a sector to the card and then the card stalls. So what is it returning?
Well, that seemed to work. Or at least work better. It successfully swapped stuff out. This looks wrong. So these are the responses we're getting from swap out and it's always this cycle Oh, now the card's gone completely. Power cycle? Does it need to be connected to the 5 volt line? Well, I can find out. Okay. No. It seems to work the first time after a power cycle, so I can see the messages go past. After a reflash it still doesn't work. I wish the signal analyzer was working again. Yeah, something extremely strange is going on that I suspect is hardware related. Uh, what can I do to proceed, I wonder? Well... Until I can load a binary off disk, I can't actually start work on the last remaining major piece of work, which is the TTY driver. So I plug the card into the PC, and yes, it is there, it is a card. And here is our file system. So, I mean, it seems to be working. Uh, one po possible thing is if the signal analyzer has crapped out. Because it is hooked up to the SD card lines, maybe that's affecting the communication. So I can at least unplug that. So I've just pulled the plug on the signal analyzer. The wires are still plugged into the hardware. The hardware is unpowered. Interesting. That's working. Well, it's it's still failing, but it's working. Now it's not working. Oh, 
what happens if I unplug the signal analyzer completely? Which is done. That seems to be more consistent. It still doesn't always fail in the same place. See, sometimes it gets a bit further. But that seems to be more reliable. So let's try and let's put those two lines of tracing back in and, oops, and see what comes out. See, now it gets, with those two lines of tracing, now it gets much further. Right, so each call to wait returns a different value. This seems exceptionally dodgy to me. I wonder whether... It's so the swapping out is writing to the card, whereas the swapping in there aren't any. I bet that it's writing garbage to the card, and the first time we do a swap in it reads garbage from the card and then immediately dies when we try to actually call it. Uh, what's this address? 216911 Yeah, uh, we're following the pointer to the p-tab which is from the udata which we've loaded off disk. So if that's garbage, that pointer's garbage, which means we follow a hyperspace pointer and it just stops working. So... Let's try turning down the speed. It's failing consistently, no matter what the speed is, which means it's unlikely to be timing related. Maybe we actually want to be writing correctly <laughs> rather than reading. That might make a bit of a difference. And that also explains the garbage we, we seem to be getting back from the disk. Interesting indeed. Let's try the usual power cycle. Because if we were reading instead of writing, yum. See, I thought we might be writing garbage uh, commands to the card. I mean, I've got a login prompt, it works. Okay, that seemed to be what was going on, but let's get rid of this tracing. Uh, we've already done that tracing. 
and that tracing uh, and that tracing and I think it's frozen. So it likes having tracing Cisco tracing back again. Okay, so it seems to be doing the same thing as before. So if we do that. Okay, it's died on a swap out. Right, we do need to do this. If you in 32 T D pointer and three make unaligned read. Now I would expect to see a processor exception if we tried to do an unaligned read, but this is a memory peripheral. Okay, uh, so we might not be getting the error we expect. Sixty-four by eight is five twelve. So we do have the numbers right. We know receive sector works because otherwise we wouldn't be getting as far as in it. We don't know about transmit sector. Writing eight chunks, sixty four bytes each. This is a U and eight star, which means adding a number on changes a byte. Mozzie, we're writing. Yeah, it looks okay to me.
that works. See, we've got all the way to the login prompt. Why does it not work without the delay? A smaller delay. Okay, that works. That doesn't work. Do we need a particular delay between receiving the byte and uh, sending the next one? Do we need to wait for the card to finish? I mean, when you send the command, we do call SPI wait, which waits for the card to actually uh, respond correctly. SP, SPI wait true means that we're waiting for an FF response. So if we do like this, all right, that hangs. And notice that it hung. Uh, outside the two braces. So it's not happening here. Okay, so let's do this. That seems to be fine. So where are we calling SPI wait? Before the command, between the command and receiving the sector. See, this is waiting for a, an FE response. And this is waiting for an FF response to indicate that uh, we're either ready to read or ready to write. So let's get rid of those. So I think You want that? Okay, that's... I was expecting it to hang before the close bracket that is in here, but it's not. I think it's hanging here, waiting for the data to be accepted. No, waiting here for the 
the right to finish. Right, it's stuck here. It's waiting for a response from the card. Somewhere between, so the data has been accepted and now we're waiting for the write to, to, to complete. Okay, uh, was it a success? Well, it must be a success, otherwise it wouldn't be calling SD SPA wait. Right, it's a, it's a success. So we are continually spamming the card waiting for a response. So let's do that. That puts in quite a big delay between attempts. And now it's fine. So what, the card doesn't like being poked so frequently? I wish the logic analyzer were working. So Are we trying the, well, you see this, you can see how long it's taking for the write to happen. Here's a particularly long delay. This seems to be more normal. Do we need a delay here? That's not helping. Do we need a delay here? That works. What about here? That's fine. So it seems to want a delay between getting the response, getting the acceptance response and poking the card to see if the write occurred. But that doesn't help. See, it, it moves on a random-ish amount before failing, but never quite gets to the login prompt. But putting the delay here works.
So the difference is that putting the delay here means that every iteration where the card returns zero, there's a pause before we ask again. dealing with SD cards. So that's worked. Now these long runs of zeros I believe are waiting for the card to return a successful write response which would be the three here. Um, we wait for a, a status with five in the bottom two bits. Is that 229? And OX1F is five. Okay, so this is the acceptance byte. Then there's zeros. Then there's our response byte. So this is the useful uh, documentation. So this is a single block write. Send the command 24. We wait for the response. We pause. We send the data packet. The data packet is defined here. Then we get a response, which is our five. Then there's a busy delay. But then this doesn't say anything about having to send another command to get the response. So the five we are seeing is 0101 data accepted. Okay, well, let's take a look at our old friend, the Arduino code. And we want SD No, SDFS This is just calling another library. SD fat is empty as we found before. No. 
looking for useful looking keywords. Okay, I don't see anything. Okay, so let's take a look at the node NCU source. So I think this would be app FATFS should talk to the SD card stuff platform SD card read block platform SD card write block right block so we do the command 24 if that fails give up and then we do SD card write data which is here We send the start token, which is FE. We send 512 bytes of data. We send 16 bits of CRC, which is a dummy. We get a single status. And then we exit. We are never querying for the second response. So, my suspicion is that this code doesn't work. So where's our wait? Let's get rid of that. Let's try this and see what it does. It works. Okay, that is odd. That's very odd. Um, so, of course, the next command that happens after a write is going to call SD send command, which and the first thing this does is going to wait for an FF ready byte. My gut feeling says that this is spinning so fast on the SD card that the SD card is never getting a chance to actually do anything. But that seems implausible to me. But anyway, we are now successfully uh, booting off a file system on the SD card to the login prompt. See, we've got the flash partition, although there's nothing on it. We've got the SD card with its three partitions. This all does seem to be working. I'll hit the reset button a few more times. Yep. Yep. Uh, let's... Where did I set the clock here? Let's put that back to 8 megahertz. Just make it a bit faster. Yeah, it seems to be okay. So that is a good progress.
I am still confused as to what's going on and I'm confused as to why my signal analyzer just stopped working and I'm confused about many things but it does actually seem to be working and it's nice and fast so much faster than the NAND so uh, use fast transfers for SD card access disable some possibly productive code in the dev SD write path but it's now running up to the login prompt so we should be good to start work on the TTY next time which is nice this is actually looking like it might be finished soon and even though it's single tasking I mean that's running a shell script and several binaries uh, and it's forking a lot and startup is still well under a second on this uh, single tasking system so I'm pleased with that that is a perfectly usable uh, speed so all I need to do now is the TTY so that we can actually log into it and add some more uh, programs and I can probably call it done plus of course the inevitable cleanup yay okay well I'm glad that is finally possibly sorted maybe we'll see if it stays sorted so that has been four, maybe five videos entirely devoted to trying to make the blasted SD card work. I still don't understand why it's working. I hate SD cards. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and please let me know what you think in the comments.